we did that. We want to share the Big Ten Championship. But, uh, you know, we didn't say in our goals that we wanted to win a share of the Big Ten Championship. We said we want to win the Big Ten Championship. And so our goals have not been satisfied yet, and uh, we have one more week to go. Michigan and Ohio State, it's the biggest game of the year unquestionably for the Wolverines. The biggest game in the 90s for the Wolverines, and perhaps, arguably, one of the biggest games ever in Michigan football history. With Rob Renes, I'm Dave Rosebluth. Here's what's on the line. Of course, the rivalry with Ohio State. The Big Ten title. The Rose Bowl title. National championship implications. It's one versus four. You got to be ready. Oh, definitely. You know, that's why we play the last 10 games. I've been saying it for 10 weeks now. It's going to be the 11th week. Uh, this is why you come to Michigan. This is why you play. This is uh, what every kid's dream is, being a game like this. I don't think much could get bigger than this game, but before we do that, they did play Wisconsin, beating them 26-16 to on Saturday. I thought Wisconsin played real well, Rob. Oh, they played extremely well. They didn't have the great Dane, and uh, who, who, if they, he would have played, you know, it might have been closer yet. Um, the guys that stepped in for him really, really ran hard. You know, we uh, made some mistakes on the defensive side of the ball, but the offense picked it up for us. And fortunately, we got out of there with a win and uh, came back to get ready for this game, 10 and 0. Let's get rolling. Michigan and Wisconsin. Michigan gets the ball first. We'll pick it up. The first possession of the game. Wolverines on offense. Chris Howard gets the first carry. The second play of the game. Good for seven yards. Very next play. Reese. Looking for Ty Streets, and Streets back in the game on Saturday. Big reception here for 19 yards. Third and 13, Greasy. Looking for Streets again, and he finds him. Another first down, and Michigan getting the wide receivers back into the offense for the first time in several weeks. And then a little trickery. Greasy, Woodson's in the game. They find him. Woodson will throw it back to Greasy. He's got blockers, receives it at the 30, and will bring it all the way down to the one-yard line. Trick play here worked well. Yeah, it worked extremely well. You know, Charles... Not only is he a great catcher, but he's a, a great passer. You know, Brian set this up tremendously well, and uh, the blockers got out in front and did, did a tremendous job. Uh, he didn't get in, but he sure got close. Michigan struggled getting in, though, after three running plays that didn't work. They go for it on fourth down. Fourth and goal. Howard gets in for the score. It's 7 nothing for Michigan and Lloyd Carr. Next possession, back on defense, and the Wolverines. First couple possessions were tough as they've been all year. Second and eighth year. Copenhagen gets to the backfield. He brings down Faulkner for a five-yard loss. It's then third down. Incomplete pass to Donald Hayes. Ian Gold with the defense and three and out. They force Wisconsin Badgers to punt. And Michigan gets back on offense. We head to the second quarter. First and ten. Back to Woodson. Woodson puts on a move. Twelve-yard gain. Couple plays later. To the ground attack. Right up the middle. Anthony Thomas. A gain of nine. And then Greasy rolls off off the play stick. He's looking deep. He's got Ty Streets in the end zone. Streets catches it. 38-yard touchdown for Michigan. They missed the point, but Ty Streets having a huge start in the first half. Yeah, um, unfortunately, Ty hasn't been having as big a game as he had this past week and, you know, the, the previous two weeks. But uh, he had a great game this week. You know, he got up elevated, got the ball, and uh, playing the way Ty plays. Next possession, a little offense for Wisconsin. This is McCullough on second and five. Breaks a few tackles for the first down. Two plays later, McCullough again runs over some more defenders, and he picks up a first down. And with Dane out, with the injury, McCullough's got a lot of carries. This was his drive. He's a fifth-year senior. He rushed for over 1,000 yards two years ago. He got the bulk of the load here, runs for another six yards, and the first down, and it helped set up a Matt Davenport field goal for Wisconsin. 33 yards out. 
the snap, the kick, it's up and it's good. It's 13 to three Michigan at this point. Following possession though, Michigan back on offense, second and six, Greasy. He finds Russell Shaw coming across the middle, first down Wolverine. And then back to the ground attack. Chris Howard, up the middle again, good blocking, nine yard gain. And there's Greasy. Having a great afternoon, he'll look for Russell Shaw. He'll hook up with him on the 30. He'll put on the move, and he's off. From the 20, 15, 10, but he's caught down at the one. 39 yards for Russell Shaw, big play here. Yeah, like Ty, you know, Russ had a great game. Here he makes a few moves, tremendous moves, puts on some speed. Unfortunately, you know, the, the safety uh, got back there and was able to make a stop. Michigan, trouble getting in though. First and goal is Howard who can't get in. Second and goal, Greasy looking to pass. He's forced to run. He can't get in and he's brought down at the one. It's third down. It's Thomas. He can't get in. So Michigan's forced to kick a field goal. Jay Feely, 18 yarder. It's 16 to three, Michigan. A situation there where you, you want to get into the end zone off the big plays. As Shaw got down to the one, as you saw, they're leading 16-3. But those receivers, Streets and Shaw, first time in a while, they, they really got you know, got the ball to the receivers. Yeah, you can't say enough for those two guys, you know, along with the other guys that were in there in the receiving uh, position. They came out, they had a great game, and uh, it's, a, it's a credit to their character and uh, their intestinal fortitude to go out there and, you know, have a, have a big game on a cold day. Intestinal fortitude, huh? Yeah. How about bird. the weather? A little bit of snow? Didn't seem like it, uh, it uh, had an impact too much on the game, though. Well, we probably saw a week in the cold weather. You know, here in Michigan, it was cold, you know, the past couple weeks. and. Uh, it dropped a little bit out there, you know, being on the other side of the lake. And, uh, everybody knows Wisconsin. You see the Green Bay games. It's, o it's always cold in Wisconsin, but uh, there's a little bit of snow, but we were ready for it. We practiced in it, and uh, we weren't going to let a little bit of cold beat us. All right, let's get rolling. Second half, Wisconsin won the toss. They got the ball deferred for the second half, and we'll pick it up with that second half. First play, second half, Wisconsin on offense. McCullough, 19 yards, a late hit by Marcus Ray, brings the ball over across midfield. Three plays later, third and five, Samuel on the option. First down, and it would lead to a touchdown. It's 16 to 10, a crucial drive here for Michigan. I thought this was a key drive to the game. It started with Chris Howard, seven yards. Third and five now, Howard again, off the screen. He'll pick up the first down. Michigan is converting on a lot of big third down plays. This one, third and seven. They find Greasy to Howard, first down. 38 yards receiving for Chris Howard, 100 yards rushing. He had a huge game, especially on the straw, bro. Yeah, <laughs> we've been saying this for the last few weeks about Chris Howard, but uh, you can't say enough. And we really look forward to him having a, a breakout game again. Uh, this not really a breakout game, but having another tremendous game this, this coming week. Here, you know, he just breaks out, gets in the open, and uh, does what he does best, picks up yards. Third and ten again. This time to Anthony Thomas, close to the first down, but only a nine-yard gain. It's fourth and one. They want Howard to get one for the first down. He gets seven. First down keeps the drive alive for the Wolverines. And then it's first and 10. They'll give it to Floyd. Floyd gets around the end, gets some good blocks, and he picks up nine. We head to the fourth quarter. Third and five, Greasy. Complete to Russell Shaw. Shaw had four receptions for 68 yards. On Saturday against the Badgers, it helped set up a Jay Feely 24 yard field goal. The kick was up, kick is good. 19 to 10 at this point. Michigan goes on to win it 26 to 16. Let's talk a little bit about the third quarter, Rob. I thought there was a little situation there. They scored, it was 16 to 10. Crowd's going crazy, they were moving the ball a little bit, but you guys did a, I thought a great job holding off their momentum. Yeah, well, that's the way it's been all year. You know, we faced Notre Dame early on in the year, and uh, we knew what our job was. Unfortunately, they, they picked up a lot of yards early in the game, but we knew our offense was gonna score, but we couldn't, couldn't rely on that only. So uh, we knew we had to keep them out of the end zone. Um, unfortunately, they did score. But yeah, the crowd crowd was a big factor, but with the type of game we were, we were trying to go out and play and we knew we had to play in order to clinch a part of the championship, we knew we had to step it up. Um, unfortunately, what we did come out with um, firing was enough to, to hold them back. How about that defense? You guys still played well, clearly not as dominant as you guys have been in other games, like, especially on the ground attack. They got rolling a little bit there. Yeah, you know, not having the great Dane. Um, it was surprising to a lot of people that they did get as many yards. But with a guy like McCullough, you know, this is his last year at home, fifth year senior. Like you said, he had a thousand yards a couple years ago. Um, a great back. Um, he just he got a lot of his yards after the first hit. So, and that's <coughs> that's a good you know point of address that we have to 
look at going into this week that with a guy like Pepe Pearson, we can't allow him to get any more yards after we make contact. You know, I was victim a few times to uh, missed tackles, just like you know a couple other guys. But that's something that we can't have this week if, we're, if we hope to, to win and uh, win the outright championship. As always, in the press conference, Lloyd Carr addressed the media. You'll also hear from Brian Greasy. Here's what the coach had to say. I'm proud of this team because um, we've had 10 games, and um, we haven't had an emotional letdown, in my opinion, all year long. We've played hard. We've been prepared. And um, I thought today that uh, we showed a lot of resolve because uh, that was a game that uh, was uh, tough to nail down. The way that we did it today is indicative of, of the team, of this team, and the character of this team, and uh, it wasn't going to be easy, and we didn't expect that it was going to be easy. It may have been a little too easy uh, last week, uh, but we knew that, uh, you know, down the stretch, uh, it was going to be more difficult, and uh, Wisconsin had a great team, and they played valiantly, and I think uh, that they deserve a lot of credit, um, but, uh, you know, our team is, is just not going to be denied. All right, talking a little bit about no letdowns this year. 10 and 0, what do you attribute to having no letdowns that happened in the past? Um, I don't know. This is the first year I've been able, fortunate enough to start, but uh, one of the reasons why we haven't allowed as many letdowns as some people would have hoped for is, is that we, we've kept in mind our focus of our goals, and you know that being we want to win a national championship, not a national, a Big Ten championship, and uh, hey, national championship, like everybody knows, will take care of itself. But uh, and we've got a part of that now, but. What's keeping us going this week and is going to is going to help us not have a letdown this week, even though we've you know clinched part of the championship, is that we want an outright championship. Like Brian, you know, was talking about we we want. It's been too long, and it's nice to have you know to have a ring, but um, it's a yellow stone if you're a co-champion. We want a blue stone, which means you're the outright champion. So uh, that that's what that's what's driving us this week, and that's what's been driving us for the past ten weeks. Um, we want to go to the Rose Bowl if we don't win this week, then it's not in our hands anymore. We have to rely on some other people. And we don't want that to happen. This whole season's been on our own hands. You know, good fans, you know, people saying bad about us, whatever it might have been, you know, we, we took it all in stride. And uh, we, we've taken pride in knowing that most of what we've done has been in our own hands, and we don't want to have to rely on Penn State or anybody else to, to send us to the Rose Bowl. Well, they'll send themselves to the Rose Bowl by beating Ohio State. We'll get to the breakdown of that game in a minute, but first, other games going on. Here's John Black. John. Well, thank you, Dave. Four other games in the Big Ten this week, and besides the game, but none should be too exciting as all the games have double-digit favorites, but they play them anyway, so here we go. Michigan State at 2-4 and four in the Big Ten needs a win for number six of the season, which should solidify a berth in a bowl. The Spartans have the right opponent this week as they head to Champaign to face the winless Illini. The Illini haven't had much fight this year, ranking last in total offense and defense. Meanwhile, the Spartans have lost four in a row since a promising beginning and desperately need a good showing. Cedric Irvin has been quiet lately, but look for him to bust out against the worst rush defense in the conference. Get ready, Motor City, for the Spartans. Illinois is a 25-point underdog in this one. They'll beat the spread, but not much else in losing 31-10, which will land the Spartans a chance to stay in Michigan for the bowl season in the great Motor City Bowl. Purdue, 5-2 and two in the conference, comes off a poor showing against Penn State, but now gets the luxury of facing an Indiana team with one Big Ten win. The Hoosiers are thankful for the Illini being in the same conference, but don't have much to brag about besides kicker Andy Payne, who is one of the Big Ten's best. Purdue ranks first in the league in passing offense and should feast upon a poor Indiana secondary. Billy Dickin has a huge game as a 13-point favorite Boilermakers put the Hoosiers out of their misery, 27-6. Iowa also needs a victory to make it to a bowl since one of its six wins was not against a Division 1A team. The Hawkeyes head to Minneapolis to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Gophers, who have one Big Ten win in a matchup of two spectacular special teams. Minnesota boasts a lethal tandem of kick returners as Tyrone Carter and Tutu Atwell average over 26 yards per kick return. The problem is the two get way too many opportunities to return kickoffs as Minnesota gives up 27.5 points per game. Iowa comes off a heartbreaking loss against Northwestern. The Hawkeyes hope Ryan Lindell will be punting a lot 
as Tim Dwight and Tony Collins average over 17 yards per punt return and have three touchdowns between them. The smartest thing for the Gophers may be to punt it away from these two guys. The 21-point favorite Hawkeyes slip into one of those exciting balls played in Texas with a 33-17 win. And lastly, Wisconsin, 5-2 in the conference after taking a beating from the Wolverines, heads to State College to take on Penn State. Six in the country, but with no shot at making the Rose Bowl. For Wisconsin to win, Ron Day must return to the field and fill some big, find some big holes behind the large offensive linemen. But Penn State doesn't plan to let the Badgers leave the Valley happy. Curtis Edith is averaging 124 yards on the ground a game and looks to help the Lions get a step closer to the Lions' goal berth. Penn State, a 15.5 point favorite, wins big in this one, 27-11. That's it for the Big Ten Report. Back to you, Dave. All right, thanks, John. On to Ohio State. Buckeyes 10-1, Michigan 10-0. My producer, Dave McMahon, wanted me to run down the scenario. Dave, I'll do it briefly for you. Two ways that Ohio State goes. Obviously, if Michigan wins outright, they go to Pasadena. If Ohio State wins this game, there's two ways that they go. Number one, if Penn State doesn't win another game, doesn't lose another game, that would mean that Michigan and Ohio State would be the only two teams with one loss. That would send the Buckeyes based on that head-to-head -head matchup. The other way is if either Florida State or Nebraska loses a game, the Rose Bowl could take either the number one or number two team in the country. If they are in that position to go to the Rose Bowl, Ohio State would, like, Ohio State would likely be there in that situation. With all that aside, though, Rob, obviously Michigan controls are destiny 10-0. and 0. The roles are reversed this year, though. The last two years, Ohio State came in. They were 10-0. and 0. They controlled everything. They were in the top spot last year, number two. You guys upset them this year. You're in their position where they were in the past at home, 10-0. and 0. Talk about that for a minute. Uh, I've been fortunate enough to be here you know, the past two seasons when Ohio State was 10-0, and, 0, and uh, I know how, how much of an exhilaration you know, it is to uh, you know, be able to knock a team off like that. So you know, you know, you understand that Ohio State's feeling that same you know, anticipation, and they have more at stake because if they do knock us off, then they're – right back to where they were last year. you feel they have more, more at stake than you guys? They have more at stake than we did last year. Oh, okay. Last year right. all we had at right. stake was I agree. the pride of beating them. Uh, so, no, of course they don't have any, <laughs> anything more than we had at stake. You know, this is, <laughs> you know, it's the Big Ten Championship. It's the biggest thing, you know, in, in my opinion, in college football. So, uh, hey, it's going to be exciting for them to try and do it, but uh, that's what they're going to do. They're going to try and do it, and uh, we're going to try and be ready. We're going to be ready. So that they, you know, don't have many opportunities to do that. Their wide receiver, David Boston, he said they win by two to three touchdowns. Your response? I like that. So that's a that's a pretty good uh, pretty good guess because that's what that is. It's a guess. And uh, hey, if they win by two or three, then I guess you know he uh, he's a he's a pretty good uh, <laughs> guesser. You know, he should be on our show with uh, with Blackie. So, uh, <laughs> but hey, we don't plan on it. It's not, it's not in our cards as far as we see it. Um, hey, it, as far as I'm concerned, the people in Vegas are the people that are going to, you know, make the wine. We don't worry about that. That's none of our concern. Our concern is to be ready Saturday, and we will be. And uh, may the best team win. Hopefully uh, it will be the Wolverines that are selling roses. Uh, we've done a lot of talk. Let's break down the game a little bit more. We'll start with their offense, their quarterbacks. They use two of them, Joe Germain and Stanley Jackson. They use them both. Both have played in all 11 games this year, but Jermaine's really the downfield passer. Yeah, um, he's a traditional drop back passer. He's got a tremendous arm. He's a hedgy guy, and he makes, you know, um, as far as I, as far as I understand, he's the you know, number one guy in the Big Ten with efficiency. Uh, yeah, he's got a, a cannon pinpoint. Um, on the other hand, he, with Stanley Jackson, he uh, he's more of a scrambler. He gets in the open. He's a season opening. He's going to try and take it. Um, so hopefully, we, you know. And the way we played the option last week, that's probably something they, you know, have seen, um, the whole world saw it. So uh, we need to be ready for that and not let them exploit, you know, any, any possible opening. Um, so we're working hard this week to try and stop that. And, you know, with the backfield that we have, you know, with, with Woodson and uh, Mark Stray and the other guys, we, we hope they try and throw the ball. You know, we hope they try and throw it to David Boston and he can, you know, do what he wants to do. Um, but we're just gonna—we're not concerned about that. We're not gonna try and—I uh, hope 
I haven't said too much as it is, you know. We're, we're confident but not overconfident. And, uh, hey, the, the best team's going to win on Saturday. We don't want to run our mouths. Not that anyone has, but uh, we're going to go out and play football. Like you said, uh, Jermaine is actually the number three passer in terms of efficiency. How do you, he, he's a different type of quarterback, though. It runs the option, like you say. That, that definitely presents some problems. They have so many different options. I think, personally, in the Big Ten, they present the greatest weapons. They got David Boston. They got D. Miller, a lot of speed at wide receivers. They run the ball. How do you prepare for the two styles of quarterback? Because they bring them in on different drives, different situations, in terms of this week for practice. We've seen both, so, you know, uh, hey, I mean, we, we have to take every play at a time, read our keys, go after the ball. You put some licks on and put 11, 11 helmets on the ball, carry on the ball, you know, uh, that's what's going to get it done. So, I mean, it's not like, oh, oh no, you know, they, they run two different types. We've seen them both. You know, Colorado ran a little, starting with Colorado, they started a little bit, they had a little bit of a um, flair to throw in the option they needed to, and, um, you know, they could drop back. You know, we've seen it throughout the year. So, really don't change too much. You know, you just emphasize and realize they could go more than, you know, they're, they're multifaceted. So, you take what they throw at you and, and uh, make the adjustments, which the coaches have been tremendous with all year long, getting us ready and, and recognizing our, our you know, problem at any given time. So, hey, we're not going to be worried about it. We're not going to be intimidated by it. We're just going to practice for it the way we have the past 10 weeks and uh, go out there and be a fired up team. In a nutshell. On to the running game, led by Pepe Pearson. Pepe Pearson, tough guy to stop. He's got nine touchdowns this year, 724 yards on the ground for him. He averages about five yards a carry. Hey, we, we, we've seen some great running backs with this Pepe Pearson. He's, um, He's got it all, you know. Um, he, when you see guys like Cedric Irvin, Tavian Banks, and Curtis Enos, I mean, he, and we can see Ron Dane, but McCullough, you know, we've been seeing great backs all week, or all season, rather, and uh, we know this guy. You know, he catches passes, he runs. Um, we know we're going to have our hands full like we have in the past. You know, we know that he's going to step it up, this being the championship game. Mm -hmm. So it, it's, it's going to be a great. One thing I noticed, though, on the ground, they do have 16 fumbles this year. That's six more than any other team in the Big Ten. I don't know if you guys have noticed that, anything about stripping the ball, but does he not hold on to the ball? <laughs> or, I, mean, I don't know who the fumbles are on, to be honest well, with you. Well, of, cor of course he holds on to the ball, otherwise he wouldn't be back there. But, um, you know, when you have a team that is that dominant in running and uh, has, has that much offense, you're going to have more opportunities to, to let go of the ball. You know, if they're on defense all the time, then to have 16 fumbles would be, you know, crazy. But... Uh, Hey, just like every other week, we hit them hard, put some licks on them, the ball, hopefully it'll pop out. So uh, <laughs> we're just going to go after them. How about the offensive line? You guys went up against a big offensive line last year, which hurt you a little last year. Last week against Wisconsin, what about uh, the Buckeyes O line? Well, I, I caught that you said that hurt us. Uh, yeah, that was kind of painful at times. But um, hey, they, they, you know, they got a, an All American that's only a sophomore in Rob Murphy. Um, they've got some younger guys up front, with you know, Eric Goldstein being a senior playing at tackle now. Um, you don't you don't get that many yards as a running back in the case of Pepe Pearson. You don't get that many yards as a scrambling quarterback as you know Stanley Jackson, without having a great offensive line. So we respect that. We understand that. Um, it, it all gets back to fundamentals: reading our keys, coming off explosively, you know, trying to get into the backfield as much as possible, cause as much havoc, and uh, mess up their reads as much as possible. On to their defense. It's led by the big cat Andy Katzenmore. Yeah, you know, he's an intimidating looking guy. I mean, look, look at him, he just, you know, he puts, he puts on, you know, look at that. He's, you can't, he's a young guy, but uh, leads the Big Ten, you know, in, in some different categories. He's an aggressive guy, he's a big guy, he's a strong guy. He, he's got some wheels. I mean, he, that's, they don't call him the big cat for, for nothing. So uh, our offense is going to, you know, have to respect that and, and come out and, I mean, He's a great player. You know, hopefully he doesn't um, make too many plays. Yeah, everyone's talking about uh, Michigan's defense. The last five weeks, though, Ohio State's only given up two touchdowns. They're pretty much behind Michigan, number two in every category in terms of passing efficiency, points allowed, all these categories besides Michigan. On to emotions. Greasy made an, an interesting comment, I thought. He talked about saying in terms of emotion, obviously both teams are going to be jacked, but the team that can control them and calm them down a little bit might have the advantage. Yeah, um... I agree with that. Um, 
when it comes down to it. But when you're out on the field, I think you know whoever can sustain him the longest is going to be going to have the you know the benefit. Um, yeah, Ohio State's given up. To get back to your earlier point, they've given up two touchdowns in the last five games. <laughs> they've given up two. I mean, it's going to come down to this game. Um, I guess what my point is, just throw out the statistics. It doesn't matter. The emotions, yeah. If you don't have emotions, you might as well not be there. And um, you know, I, I wouldn't be surprised if we have a, a record sellout crowd. So there's going to be emotions in the stands, and you know, a, a big majority of those guys, and gals, and uh, children, they're, they're going to be, you know, Ohio State fans. So emotions are going to be flowing on the in the stands, on the sidelines, on the field. <laughs> hey, Michigan fans, <laughs> you know, we're going to need it. It's going to be it's going to be a big part of the game. But yeah. Wednesday night, Thursday night, Friday night, maintain the emotions, get fired up, watch a lot of film, get in some good practices, get out of the field Saturday, I think it's going to be overflowing with emotion. And uh, I don't think you have to worry about um, containing it. You know, it's just going to be, it's going to be a problem of hopefully containing it so it don't overflow in the stadium, not so that it doesn't, you know, escape from, uh, from the players and the fans. My final question, let me get your personal feeling a little bit, your gut reaction in the game, Feelings about this week, Ohio State, everything that's been leading up. Obviously, you play the whole season for it. What's going on? What's going on with you this week? Hey, I'm fired up. I'm ready to go. You know, I got you know 100 other guys that are at home right now. Hopefully, you know, tuning in. Um, hey, we're all ready to go. We're all fired. This, hey, being from Michigan, seeing 15, 20 of these Michigan Ohio State games, yeah. and that's why you come. You know, uh, all the way back to Bo Schembechler and Woody Hayes. And everybody makes fun of it. Hey. <clears throat> Not everybody, but you know, some guys make fun of it. It goes all the way back, but it's the truth. You know, we've been playing Ohio State for, if I if I understood it right, today they're saying in the regular season since 1930. So uh, it's been a long time where it's been a you know, in uh, over 50% of the games had implications on who goes to the Rose Bowl. This year, the past two have been no different. Um, my gut feeling is that the best team's gonna win. The, the team that goes out there and sustains drives. Basics of football. This is a game where you throw out the records. Fortunately, we have two, you know, both teams could very easily be undefeated. May the best team win. <laughs> All right, we're just about out of time here, Rob. Michigan and Ohio State on Saturday. Nothing much to be said. We don't need to hype it up anymore. Best team hopefully will win. Michigan and the Buckeyes. 12 o'clock kickoff on ABC. Enjoy the game for Rob Renus. I'm Dave Rosenluth. We'll see you next week.